I am an assistant professor of political science at Concordia University, and my research interests really focus on urban politics and policy. And in general, I'm sort of interested in how to build more sustainable, just, equitable cities. And I've really looked at this age-friendly cities program and aging in cities as a case study to explore some of those uh, bigger questions. This Age Friendly Cities program is a panacea for aging in place or a really revolutionary, effective, new approach to supporting senior citizens to live in their environments and to age in place. So in their homes, in their neighborhoods, their communities, their cities, their small towns, their rural areas. we want the myth to be true. We want this to be a, a really substantive program. And I think what we're arguing is that right now it's not in practice. And the whole purpose of the chapter is to try to identify why it's not so that we can try to inform a more substantive program. These programs tend to be very short term. You know, Montreal strategy, Toronto strategy, they're sort of like between two to four years. Yes, that works with election cycles, but we need some long term investments here. Um, you know, another challenge is that relating to all those is that these programs are really inadequately funded. Right and funded in a very short term way and also inadequately sort of staffed and institutionalized within the city. So in both of both Toronto and Montreal, we're not seeing, you know, new age friendly offices and new staff that are hired to really coordinate these strategies and staff may be hired in each department of the city that are experts on senior citizens and housing, senior citizens in transit. So we're not seeing that kind of investment within the bureaucracy too. Um, I think we also see things like fragmentation. So one neighborhood might have a really a nice program or a nice investment, but we don't see that in other neighborhoods. So there's kind of inequity too within this program. We really see that here in Montreal where we have a borough system. So the city of Montreal has a big strategy that's supposed to cover the whole city, but it's fairly vague. And some boroughs actually have their own age-friendly st strategies, but not all of them do. And so there's, there can be some fragmentation there and there doesn't seem to be a lot of coordination and communication happening between different places within cities to share and to try to scale up these programs. Research on age-friendly cities worldwide has highlighted several gaps and challenges. Uh, some of the literature has, set, has, you know, has gone so far as to say this is just a symbolic program. So symbolic is basically the opposite, right, of this panacea, this huge revolutionary program. We need to be really, really clear on what exactly the role of local government is <laughs> to support age-friendly cities, because what we have, um, especially in the Canadian landscape, is that major areas of this age-friendly checklist around healthcare, housing, transportation, or the joint responsibility of municipal, provincial, and sometimes federal governments. So what we really need to think about and see are intergovernmental age-friendly city strategies in order to really scale this up and to get the kind of funding behind it to do these types of large-scale programs and to complement more community types of investments like exercise programs, um, you know, community programs and libraries and that kind of thing. Those small programs cannot be a replacement for the broader investments we also need to have.